Triple KO! Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Triplest of KOist. We're dying three times straight because everybody came back either from Evo exhausted or with COVID. Hello, uh, I am, my name is Max. I'm joined by Justin, and uh, poor guy got bodied. How you doing, Justin? Uh, you know, I'm I'm alive. We we we, su we <laughs> survived, and uh, my voice is slowly coming back. But we, we're good. We're here. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if you're able to do a podcast, I mean, that's a functional human being right there. Yep, exactly. <laughs> uh, I'm also joined by Matt. How's it going, Matthew? Uh, I am okay. I, I, I feel bad Justin's kind of going through it. Uh, I threw my voice out definitely at Eva. I was just screaming. I was just screaming a bunch. So other than that, I, I've been good. Yeah, almost the entirety of the Yo Video Games crew I was here excited to see, uh, like, their impressions and stuff. And they came back in street and they were like, oh, 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 yeah, yeah. Can't and nobody had any voices. <laughs> so, oh, um, yeah, Evo was pretty uh, pretty exciting this year. I mean, just as like an, an overall recap, and we want I want to get some impressions from Matt and Justin. This was an Evo that I spent uh, 35 hours streaming ap across three days from straight. home. Straight. That's, that's, that's uh, gone like. So I was I was pretty dang exhausted by the end of all of it, uh, and I feel like I went to Evo, but being there was a pretty unique experience because according to Evo, uh, the creators got the key to the city. They can do whatever they want. They can kill whoever they want uh, for one night, one specific w a block of an hour. They can kill as many people as they want. That's what that means. Oh, it's, it's like the movie Purge. Yes, it's the Purge. It's the Evo Purge. Okay. Uh, we got Evo. What is the deal with 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 America and giving the the keys to the city to anything? Like I don't. Does it actually give you something? The actual Listen, freedom. Yeah, you can steal Evil or Day. kill anybody. Evo Day. Day. That's what I gave. Yeah. yeah Evo Day. Shout outs to E Games. Okay. E Games. Okay. Yeah. So uh, it it is well from what I understand. Like there's there's kind of a weird thing going on with e sports uh, in in the in the sector that it that it resides in over the past few years, where a lot of like big side AAA e sport games are not doing great. Right. They're not like dead, but they're obviously not pulling the same numbers that they might have been in the mid to 2010s. Yeah. Um, how, yeah. <laughs> however, for fighting games, it's a different story now. Where Evo now just had like the biggest esports slash like video game like attendance thing literally ever. Mm -hmm. uh, you could you could judge by how not well it's doing by going next to the Hyper X esports arena next to the Luxor, and no one ever walks in and no one ever walks out. It's just this empty building. <laughs> I, I haven't even seen that. It's been it's been so long since I've been to the Luxor. Yeah. yeah, they usually only hold parties there. Like they, they had the Project L uh, after party for on Friday night at the oh, okay. Hyper the HyperX Arena. So, but yeah, you're right. Like a lot of esports, I feel like people are saying esports events are dying down. FGC is rising up. Maybe, maybe we had the right pacing because we didn't really. I guess FGC never really rushed it to like, hey, let's go from mm. like zero to a million dollars <clears throat> right away. Right, we took our yeah. sweet ass time to get there it was never like shoving uh like a, a square peg through a circle hole type situation right which yeah. is which is with a lot of games what they kind of do where they like oh let's just, we'll just cram this thing down the throat and you know yep. ma make make it take off like in the same way that i feel like with even fgc content creation myself yourself you matt and everybody it, it's like you never like enjoy a moment of absolute spiking popularity right where like a, a fighting game video or the content you make isn't just gonna go boom <gasps> bitch and all of a sudden you're thrust into a lamborghini you move to beverly hills like because of moon, your Fortnite, like that just has never happened to fighting game fans you enjoy this it's, nice like build right and that's yeah, kind of what, what it is it's gradual yeah like yeah. uh J justin pointing out those incredible like can you beat like x challenge videos at his booth has done really well yeah but like it's still going to be gradual like yeah, right gradual. they're they're boosting for sure but it's just it's just you know one of those things that you discover and and it's still part of the grind and that seems to be what the fgc is doing because even though this is the biggest evo ever like last year's was still big. pretty big yeah. too yeah and it's i think i think overall attendance and interaction even i i thought maybe last year's numbers on my end 
were possibly eclipsing this year. And I went back and checked. I'm like, no, I beat it by like 10%. I was like, whoa. Oh, nice. wow. And even last year, there was a bit of a difference. Like people were actively awaiting trailers for the new Street Fighter and stuff. And that was kind of here, but it wasn't a game that was already out. So, you know, it's it's. Um, I'm actually kind of surprised that everything was a, a bit better, even overall, because, man, SF6 is friggin' popping. I mean, we had... Uh... So there was 11,000 players, 7,000 of them were Street Fighter, uh, six players. And then besides that, after 11,000, there is 15,000 extra spectators. Yeah. yeah. So there's more spectators than players this year by a long shot. Um, and that's kind of made it another reason why the arena was actually completely sold out. This time. Yeah, I, yeah that I don't think I've ever seen it up. sold out, right? Yeah, it usually there's usually a lot of empty seats because the scalpers and everything. But like... This time around, like, I actually ran into the staff going to Evo. And then I was talking about, I was like, hey, man, like, aren't you scared that there's going to be, like, these scalpers? They, like, they looked into it. And they said, like, it's, like, maybe only, like, 2% of people were actually scalpers. Huh. Everyone else were, like, actual people that wanted to go to Evo and bought a seat. Hmm. So, so I, I guess they're right. I mean, th th those pictures were amazing. The videos were amazing. Like the camera work and everything. You see was, all the, everybody there. It was weird to be here from a spectator side and have to explain to people. I'm like, chat, this doesn't usually happen. Like that that arena, every single year I've been in it, uh, even in finals day, is still Empty. got like 25% of it is is yep. not occupied, right? Even, even on the biggest event. Yep. And then also the craziest part was it all started like, like the, the lines were like, backed up at since 10 a.m to get that, into what, the to get into the arena arena yeah marvel like literally like seats were filling up once marvel 3 started wow yeah max uh, like also just again to the exhibit hall at like 10 a.m on like friday oh, the yeah. line started near the elevators in the mandalay like yeah, you know yeah, the yeah, main yeah. elevators yeah. oh i know how big that the walk is that that's where the line started. Yep. I, I, I my eyes bulged out like a Hanna Barbera so cartoon like, character. Just just from my my visual perspective, that's past the casino. It's like in the middle yeah, of the casino. Yeah. 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 That's such a big walk. Holy <laughs> shit, dude! It, it's a, it's at least a ten minute walk with no with, with no, no line. Traffic. Like yeah, yeah, five to ten minutes with no line. Yeah. Uh, so what what did that make the experience like? Or did you guys get like VIP in there? Um, no, I I didn't. I did not. <laughs> I, I did not. <laughs> did not. Yeah, I I was commentating, so I had the luck lucky talent badge, so I could skip through everything. But uh, you could just it was very hard to like eventually just walk around the I would say the convention area. Yeah, the tournament area is obviously like more space because there's less there's no booths there. Yeah. Um, but like the the convention area with all like the Project L, the Capcom booth, Mortal Kombat, all these other booths. It was like literally need on the haystack type of stuff. That was going to be was. my other question is that I, I haven't been able to join like Rick's modern Evo where it, it has it with under like new ownership because the last one I went to was 2019. So yeah. the the modern Evo in terms of the, the not competition side and accommodating like all the other elements of it is probably pretty jam packed. I saw the size of that arcade and I was like, dang, that's a lot of games, bro. Dude, the that, arcade that, that was, was separate. Sick. The arcade was separate from the convention area. Oh, okay. Like it was like near the doors. Uh so when you yeah. enter, you see the arcade era and then to your left um will be all the convention stuff. Yeah. So well, literally anything playing related, it's going to be on to the right. Yeah. And that's and that's yeah. the the thing that you know, is smart about the, the current tenure at Evo is that they invested a lot into pretty much creating this like E3 experience, but for fighting yeah. games is what they're yeah. doing. And that's what the, the first day, even on uh, from a viewer's perspective, felt like just a, a giant stage show that's like eight hours long of E3 announcements and, you know, nothing that I would know about ahead of time. Yeah. I, I, oh, yeah. Last really? Time, really? Sorry, Max. Justin. You know what I mean? <laughs> Last time I went was in 2018. So you said you last time you went was 2019. Justin, yep. you went last year. How does the size of this year compare to last year? Because we neither me or Max went to that one. Um, last year I felt like it was, it was it was much emptier because obviously it was there were still restrictions from like lots of countries that they can't travel. Mm. Um, so a lot of people for for international representation they could not come. Um, also, it was like the the start of no more COVID. Um, so, you know what I mean? No more COVID, right? So then people, yeah. not a lot of people showed up. So it was a lot of room to actually walk. Um, mm -hmm. This year, however, like, I felt like, um, yeah, it was just so many people everywhere. 
um everybody probably got asked for like photos and everything like that so that one was uh it was it was very busy this year was way busier compared to what i remember from last year yeah because from 2018 this was like a massive difference like the space just allotted for it like was yeah. it was bigger part of the convention space yeah and every, but everything was organized really well like like Justin was kind of saying all the industry booths are over there the artist alley is right there the arcade which had survival arts by the way was was there and I was like, this is the best. Was I've there, never was, seen it did, in did person. They have Dino ever. Rex? Was there Dino Rex? They did not have Dino Rex. Those scum sucking bastards. <laughs> Damn you, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, big shout outs to um the Evo crew. I also wish them all a speedy recovery because it, it feels like anybody that like went to Evo uh that was a part of like staff and had to like shake hands with a lot of people almost everybody came back sick uh and there was there was a big contrast from what happened at, at like combo breaker where combo breaker was still putting some some restrictions and trying to be careful and there was no massive outbreak that happened at combo breaker from what i understand because like they were like, you should probably wear masks uh, to this thing, and now we don't do it at Evo, and it's like, oh shit, everybody's, it's Evola, you know, 2023 edition. Plus yeah, 20,000 people. Exactly. So. Yeah. That, and then the week before, there was a huge outbreak at the Final Fantasy event as well, too. Was there really? Yeah, oh, it was the, they, they call it the super spreader or whatever. But then, obviously, those people are carried over to go to Evo. <laughs> No, what me? Well, what? Well, think, how long ago like, was the Final Fantasy thing versus the week, Evo? It was week before Evo. See, what they would have had to They're have been back to sick, back. and they would have had to have gone to Evo sick. Bro, it's America, man. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my freedom. Come I on, gotta man. see these Street Fighter Six finals. <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta watch Street Fighter Six. I gotta play Project <laughs> L. I gotta play Mortal Kombat One. Yeah. Like they got all the. I gotta buy all this new stuff that's only exclusive at Evo. Hell yeah. That's yeah. what people are going to think, right? So yeah, my, my biggest sympathy goes out to like Justin and everybody else that, you know, pretty much did their due diligence and we're going to make this event amazing. We're going to shake hands and say hi to everybody and then come home with this stupid plague. Uh, so yeah, I'm, was, I'm just really sorry. It was sorry. an amazing event. It was an amazing I, event though. I kept it to fist bumps. I don't know how much that helps, but so, I was just like fist bumps is, is as close as I can do. So I I, I will say uh, none of the guys got sick. Kenny Steven Simmons came back. And how did like, Kenny not yo. get sick? He went to every party. <laughs> everything um, yeah that was that was, that was crazy actually they they said I don't believe that, that they they kept it to they all kept it to fist bumps and uh in in some situations when they weren't like you know and they were in big groups of people they were wearing masks so okay. I'm, I'm having a thing that i have to travel to pretty soon and i'm like yeah i'm pretty sure i'm gonna try to do the same thing and oh. try my best Steve was in the middle of the dance floor at he Eye was. Candy just, and just l dancing, letting it rip. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> he was literally in the middle of the, uh, between everybody. Like, that's <laughs> crazy. He's, that's godlike. They dodged bullets. <laughs> yeah. That's all I got to yeah, say. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Blo uh, block game was really strong, parried everything. They, they both they literally parried everything. We got oh. uh, alongside like the event, which was you know massive, and we got to watch it for a moment, if not experience it live. Um, I'm, I'm looking at this insane effing laundry list of stuff that's on here. So, I think we just got to start going through it because we, we also yeah. have you know the combat cast, which just took place earlier today with big updates and uh, announcements and stuff from Mortal Kombat 1. So uh, let's just start getting through it. Uh, Justin, how do you feel about Johnny for Guilty Gear Strive? Is it going to make you go back and uh, start competing in the game again? You know, I felt like Johnny was really cool because he throws cards, but then I really liked the coins too. But so they just took out the coins. Yeah, he has cards right? instead of coins. Maybe they do different things now. Yeah, maybe, you know, obviously they want to have um, make characters different, but I guess they didn't really make Johnny too different. He, he like, looks this like so yeah, aggressively similar. similar. Yeah. yeah. In the same way that it's like, well, they didn't change Biken at all. You go back and you look at like, oh, no, they did. She's way more detailed, but it's yeah, like the same exact thing with Johnny. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, I I feel like I don't, Johnny's not going to make me excited to go back to play uh, Guilty Gear Strive, but I did see the new mechanics. They yeah, there's a new, lot. Yeah, new mechanics. Uh, characters have new moves. May jumped off the dolphin. Okay, like literally, that's a game changer, right? There. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about it, Matt? So Johnny is 
one of the coolest characters of all time that I don't play. <laughs> like Johnny is and looks so cool. And then I will play Johnny. I'm like, this isn't what I want from this cool ass character. It's funny. I don't know how to explain it. it yeah, I'll, I'll explain it and I'll, I'll do my best to explain it. Cause I have felt a very similar way about Johnny to what you're describing all the way back to like the year 2000, when I first saw it, like guilty gear characters and guilty gear X. I was yeah. like, this Johnny guy is really cool, but is he trying too hard? <laughs> he's got like no shirt on he's got a trench coat he's got swords he flicks coins he's got a big fucking vampire hunter d hat you know i think this guy's trying too hard to be cool but, but how can you try too hard when you're in guilty gear like he's almost boring compared to guilty gear other guilty gear characters that are crazy i feel like know? he just he, he's like he's uh. like a box ticker where it's like uh, okay let's just yeah. tick the boxes of all stuff that is cool while other guilty gear characters are cool in different ways right but They're, you but you like leo white fang who is also a, a massive box ticker to be completely honest uh the the 90 of what i like about leo is pretty much in his gameplay is the fact All that he right. played so different than other characters in, in XR. But he also like, looks like a cool dude, though. Yeah, he's so, maybe not uh, as cool as Johnny. Maybe not, not as cool as Johnny. He's a lion. I think he's lion way man. better looking in Strive than he was in XR. You know? Yeah, I, I'll give you that. That's fair. Like, yeah, like most that. characters, but Johnny's in the game. Um, I'm going to jump back in and, and try it out. It's just been a long time since I played Strive, and there's been so many fighting games. Uh, the other big one, uh, KOF 15. Uh, just recently got an update. No, it's just, like just came out. So a lot of people are playing that. Apparently got a matchmaking update, like a, a, a matchmaking really? fix of some kind. Yeah. So now that website is kofmatchmakingbroken.com. It doesn't say like it's still broken. It says maybe. <laughs> it, goes, like, really? it, says it says maybe. maybe right now. People are still testing it. That's so <laughs> I haven't had a chance to check it out myself because of a billion games. But um, alongside with that, Duo Lawn was also added to the game. Last time we saw this character was in KOF 13 was probably one of the more fun characters in KOF 13 from what I remember. Uh, that game, that character's crazy in that game. He would make me come back to play King Fires 15. Like, yeah. Just because he's, he's so cool. Um, just like the fact that he has like all those teleports, uh, long range normals, rushdowns, kind of like a rushdown Dawson, right? Before Dawson became rushdown in Street Fighter 5. Yeah. And I really like his play style. He, he, was, he definitely stood out to like, when it comes to like a lot of the newer characters that have been released, like kind of like, because he's from the same era as like Ash Crimson, pretty yes. much. Yeah. So I really like his playstyle a lot. Yeah, I think it's a good call. I, I think in terms of like some of the other characters that have been put in there, like you know, Paula Paula, Freaky Wada, whatever the hell her name is, uh, like this is a bit cool. Like I think this is a bit of kind of an exciting and, one. And who's that character? Uh, that other character, uh, that Naj, right? That she's from fourteen. Yeah, no. Najd. Right. So she came out um, after Evo, and I mean, people were literally like, "Yeah, she's broke." Really? She is, off she the is, battle already. She's so broken. She literally does so much damage. She kills you so easily. Like, they literally... She's literally one of those DLC characters. <sighs> like, oh, this is pay to win right here. Yeah, as is the usual case with a lot of KOF 15 DLC stuff, right? It's been yep, kind of yep. it's been kind of weird so far where you're either on one end of the spectrum where this like character's pretty mid or kind of bad or they're just like insanely busted. And they don't really come out like... They're, they're really good. Like, no, they're usually like... F all broken or something and yep. this is kind of following that pace once again where it's like well enjoy her while she's really good because in the next cycle she's going to most likely be really bad yeah, yeah pretty much that's what it seems like uh for dual on i've i totally has a fan base i can see their appeal i've never really kind of neutral on them like ever since uh kof 11 i think they debuted in yeah and i'm just kind of like yeah that, uh, just any stretchy character, I'm just kind of like, yeah, it's not, it's, it's not for me. But it is, they are a good pick for yeah. at this point in in KOF 15 because you kind of needed like another like older school. I, ju I just want Shen Wu. I just want Shen Wu now. Yeah, Please. I think Shen showing up in the game to be great. He was he was the character I naturally gravitated in thir in 13, and I'm like, damn, this dude's mm -hmm. fun. You want yeah. the completion, huh? Yeah, yep. the KOF 13 like merger. You know, that, yeah. all the big characters from that game. It's true. Yo, but, but can we get Brian Battler or Heavy D before? before okay, so I forgot uh, sports move? team. You know what I mean? Yeah, sports, sports team? team needs sports team needs to be Triborg, where it's all three. Team oh my sports. God. Team That's sports. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I though. don't know how you they tag each other. No, no, but they're one character, 
but they're all three. So you essentially have a team of like six. So it's like they tag each other in. So you're telling me it'll be like, like what is that, Golf Masters game or whatever? It'll be that game. It'll be Brian Battler for football and some other sports game that they put out. Or, or it's one member of the team, but he has all the different sports gear on at once. So <laughs> he's he's like, got like a helmet. He's like a one-man band. <laughs> he's so he's like a stance. <laughs> out. So he's pretty much a stance character. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's a stance character. That's, that's amazing. <laughs> that, that's for free, SNK. You can take that. Take that from us. So, uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of stuff happening, like overall to SNK games. And you know what? I'll, I'll keep it in the the SNK bracket right here because this probably end up being ended up being one of my most anticipated announcements at all of Evo. And mm -hmm. we got a title update, official name for the next big SNK game, and it is Fatal Fury with the best surname possible, City of the Wolves. That's a great Absolutely. name. Perfect. So Literally perfect. So I think we talked about a bunch of previous episodes ago, like, what are they going to call this? Are they going to call it Garou? Are they going to call it Fatal Fury? One's more well-known in one country, one name is well-known in another. Yeah. So they cool. literally, I guess they picked the best thing because the last game was Mark of the Wolves, so City yeah. of the Wolves follows that. And I still think Fatal Fury is the right choice to call it. You don't call Samurai Showdown Samurai Spirits over here. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, this makes sense. Um do we all wish the trailer was like a More? minute, two minutes long? Yeah. But it has only been a year, so. The, the trailer was, okay, so when I, I was going over this quite a bit, and the, the trailer does a good job at showing you an evolution, at least. Um, yeah. Because if if you do, and, and granted, you first see the trailer, and you're like, oh, so they're just using KOF 15 models. And they're just putting them into Gauro and or I'm sorry, City of the Wolves, and that's the way it is. But it it isn't that. If you side by side them, there is pretty big differences, and the animations are different. There's a, there's a ton more secondary animations. Their clothes are all moving. Their hair is all animating. Like there's a lot more stuff going on under the hood. Uh, and funny enough, when you side by side to KOF 15 it makes 15 look bad. <laughs> like, I don't think 15 is a really bad looking game for me personally. I mean, I think it's fine, but it doesn't like, ah, this game is visually the best. Yeah. But I think in comparison, this is easily the best looking like 3D, 3D representation that an SNK game has had, I think ever. Um, and it's looking pretty good in my opinion now. You have to make it cool. Like if you think about back in the day where like, you had like the King of Fighters series, and then Garo came out. Yeah, it, Garo looked uh, so much different. It a lot of so expectation there, right? Right. So it's like you kind of have to keep that tradition where, like, like if you're gonna make you know some something Garo, Fatal Fury, City of the Wolves, it has to be like that same type of feeling where it's like this is its own IP, its own different game. Mm -hmm. I think uh, Oda that were at SNK that worked on like the old Garo and this was working on this one, like knows that this was a visual yep. uh, benchmark for SNK back in the day. So they at least have to try to make this look better than their current 3D games. And uh, Max, I saw, I watched your, um, while I was at Evo, I watched your like reaction to it. I'd already seen it. So I tell Justin pretty much at, at the event, I tell Justin at the, at an after party, I'm like, so Max made this, uh, made this observation, but it kind of looks a little bit like Marvel three. Yeah. Uh, it has that high contrast style. Yeah. And Justin was like, I don't believe you. Like, I like, I don't think you had seen it yet but, or you saw it really quickly on your phone. But when you like zoom in on it you, and you look at the slowdown, it's like, yeah, there is, there is a bit of cell shading it, going, going on there. It almost is like a, and I, I can't say it's like manga style because it's not, it almost is taking directly from like an, almost an American comic style where characters have all these like specular really defined highlights like all over them and then literally cross hatch shading which is even more detailed than marvel 3 and then the marvel 3 part kicks in which is really really harsh black shadows and mm -hmm. characters have really harsh black shadows that give them a really powerful striking like outline and silhouette followed up by a highlight and that highlight is like a bright blue and all mvc3 characters practically have this so i'm like dude this art style is just marvel 3 but more detailed uh, for the most part, but there's a lot more, obviously a lot more detail when, when you, when you zoom in on it. So it, I, I really do think if we're talking about what does the new Mark of the Wolves, City of the Wolves look like, it's probably Marvel three. Oh, I can't yeah. wait. I, I can't wait. I mean, so. I'm really glad we had talked about like, what's this going to look like? I don't want it to look, I just don't 
take 15's models and reuse them again. Yeah. And while there's like a when when um uh Rock does his like cross hands yeah. when he's about to similar. do a move that that I was like oh my god that looks like 15 but then every other animation in that bit of gameplay I'm like no that looks different yeah. it's just when when Rock does that animation I can just I all I can think about is 14 and 15 so that but, that that trailer left me wanting so much more man yeah it did yeah. Uh, can you quickly go through Max? Because I I don't remember what it was, but you went through all the battle noises that people are doing on the map, and yeah. you were able to like kind of figure out roughly who they're referencing here. All I caught myself was Tzok. Hopefully Tzok, because I I want Tzok back rather than King of Dinosaurs, and some uh, either Rio or Kushnud Butt. Like yeah, I that's think, all I heard. Uh, so this is from the the SR or the SNK wiki. Um, the voices of this is this is according to them. People that just have way better ideas of exactly how characters sound from before. Uh, Hakuto Maru, uh, nice. Mai, B Jenny, Kevin Ryan. I gotta look up that one. Uh, Marco Rodriguez, which is Kushnod Butt. Uh, Hotaru Futaba. So Hotaru's back. Gato and Tizok is what people are pulling from it as of right now. Uh, yeah. But there's also several other characters that we have seen in the concept art, which is like Andy in the background. We saw like Kane, Billy Joe, Kane, Billy. Joe, Kane. Uh, Billy. Billy yeah. yeah, so there's there's been a lot of other. And the other interesting thing is that Oda had interviews, uh, I think over in Japan or with Japanese publication, that mentions that they have eight to 10 characters online with moves and like ready to show off. Really? But the game is actually that. really far along in development and they're... They're just waiting for the next opportunity to show something big, and I think that's most likely going to be Tokyo Game Show. Game Show. Tokyo yeah. Game so show. just about a month from now, we might be seeing more on Fatal Fury City of the Wolves, which is which is great because um, yeah, that is good because I, I didn't read about that. Eight. I thought they had like Terry and Rock, and that's it. No, that, that's it's apparently pretty in. pretty early, you know, uh, what what we're seeing right now compared to what they actually have done. And, and and just FYI, Kevin Ryan is the guy in military blue outfit that oh, has the explosions. Guy. Oh, yeah. okay. He just like grabs you and does like yeah. a like a crawl on the front. Like he's actually super busted in, in Garo. He's like one of the better characters. But back in the day, no one thought he was. And I was like, no, he's cool. But no one believed me. Everyone's like, that's Shut not up, the guy not with cool. the hair. No, oh, no, no, that's a different character. That, yeah, that's Freeman. Yeah. I Freeman. always get Freeman and that dude mixed up. Yeah, uh, Ke Ke I, Kev Kevin is like the guy. -o, like. He looks yeah, like a yeah. guy, but he doesn't. He doesn't throw fireballs at all. Yeah. He's like able. He's actually kind of like able. So I think a little bit, yeah. The, at the end of that trailer, and we see, oh, it looks good. Oh, this is an art style that I'm, I'm hella down for, and seeing how the characters move and all those secondary animations and stuff. Now I'm just like, okay, so uh, are we bringing back Just Defense? Are we bringing bring back, back the line do you, system? Do you, are we bringing back the that? top system? I mean, I think I think it, for Fatal Fury, that has to come back, right? Like, JDs have to be a big part of the game, right? I think so. I feel like JDs, or maybe there's there's different modes, possibly? Well, what do you mean? The, right? like, uh, maybe maybe you know? grooves. That, that could be the case, but this isn't... This is a lot different than, like, King of Fighters, which is just a mishmash of all the other mechanics. Like, are, are we going to get KOF style like mobility and stuff like that. Obviously, the same usual no. short hops and all that shit. I don't know. It's like uh, there's there's a lot of differences between like Fatal Fury and KOF games because KOF is just uh, kind of everything. System. Yeah, the uh -huh. line. No, I don't think we're getting the line system back. Shut up. Wait, the line I, system I is, is the hop back and forth. Yes. Yeah. I don't. I don't want that. I think I, I don't want, want that, that either. so bad. Oh, I don't want that. I think the bigger question is like, is the top system going to come back in some way? Is it going to be sort of Re redesigned. I, I think the top system is like unique enough, but it doesn't overpower any other really part doesn't. of the game. Like it's just it's fine. It's there. Um, okay, if I can't have line, if I can't have my glorious line system, you gotta at least give me the stage fatalities where you oh. knock people into subways and boats. You give that to me, Oda. You give that to me now. Yeah, I think especially I don't mind that. Oh, you can have that. This is yeah, the okay. the only other. I mean, just just by comparison, I think the only other SNK game of modern SNK that rivals the comparison of this, where it's like, oh yeah, this game looks pretty good, and I think the execution of their art direction was pretty 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 striking, was Samurai Showdown. Is Samurai Showdown yeah. the greatest looking game of all? No, it's not. But I think like consistently, 
I think it looks a little bit better than KOF 15 now that we've been looking at KOF 15 for a while. I think KOF. I think so. I agree with that. I think 15 isn't a bad game, but it looks a little too saturated where a lot of those effects and like the super bright colors and all that stuff starts to like bleed in with each other. And I'm like, yeah, this is a little, this is a little messy where it's like you almost have to play on training stage to see what the hell is going on. Mm. Yeah, that's true. So I think by comparison, this this is uh, from the very early picks we've been seeing, right? Uh, kind of compar comparative to Sam Show, where it's like, oh, I think they got a pretty good art style going on here, and I think this will probably get people's attention. And I've seen some speculation, people saying, like, could you, po so because City is in the title, are you possibly going around Southtown? Like, I, I know this might be I got be, that impression. Like, yeah, I crazy. think so that I love Metro City, I kind of actually love Southtown way more because it's just more fucked up. And, it's like, more it's, dank. It, it's more dank. Uh, Geese used to... Like, there's all this storyline to it where Final Fights is generally pretty simple. And there's all these weird places that you don't even get in Metro City. Like, there's a weird amusement park. Yeah. There's, yeah. like, the pier. You know, all these crazy places that I just think... I, but, but that's not SNK-like. I think no. maybe an overhead map yeah. You can go around and do little things. We don't need That's that it. full world tour thing. We just need something to that that lets you go about the city in some way. Yeah, a tiny bit. Like, like, like a little like arcade mode type of thing. Yeah, well, something. Yeah, you well, know, something. It's it's way more dank. Me Metro City is the kind of place where you run into a box head or something like that, and you know, this is the kind of place where you go down the wrong block and y your shoe's just gonna have a bunch of needles in it. You're like, oh god, <laughs> get me, get me out of here. This place sucks. And and modern metro city is way like cleaner and nicer yeah and there's food on every street corner food everyone's on every street. everyone's got a hot dog for you to buy everyone's got hot o pizza hot o pizza <laughs> so because it's uh fatal fury and garo kind of like mission mashed together which what's that one character do you guys want to come back Ooh. well uh, of of you pick one the, but but here's the thing is like there's already a couple that seem to be like semi confirmed based yeah. on the voices. Yeah. So I can't say my, I mean, my, they'd be like really stupid not to put my in, but out of every fatal fury character, I'm trying to think of someone who like, I would want Mr. Big. He's an art of fighting character to be fair, but he is yeah. in South town. So that's yeah. super applicable. Nah, fuck it. Yeah. I want Mr. Big in there. Oh, Mr. Big. I miss Mr. Big. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm so I'm so specific on the damn the KOF character. I'm so specific to the fucking Bogards and the Geeses. I just want Geese back in some way. But I know, like in in this canon, now. he's 100 dead as shit. No, he's Nightmare skeleton. Geese. He's skeleton. Yeah, it's, it's there's no way Skelly it's happening. Geese. Yeah. Yeah. No. Um. Because Kane's the new bad guy. Or, or exactly. Whatever. There's no way it's happening. Um. I would say from the 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 more classic series, like. Like bring back a Fatal Fury one character, Richard Meyer or or Axel Hawk. At least from Fatal Fury two, but um, one of those guys. But uh, if I was to choose like one specific person, I think Han Fu from the oh, Real Han Bout Fu. series, yeah. which was a Jackie Chan kind of guy who had like nunchucks. Yeah, like that's different. Like you know, a weapon based character. He was kind of goofy a little bit, like almost edging on on uh, Dan territory where he's a little silly but i think you could do something with one of those real bout characters or oh my god i forgot rick stroud oh yeah rick the, the, the boxer the boxer that's gonna guy make that... me use this google here <laughs> <laughs> he's like a really he, big boxer guy yeah he's like, like i think he's, he's like native american and literally they're gonna put him in more games but then they didn't design vanessa who has a very similar move set and vanessa like took over his spot it's or something Kasumi. crazy like that what about kasumi or toto yeah, sure. That's the thing is that almost any SNK character, regardless of Sam Show, and even then, Sam Show characters can appear whenever they want, really. Especially yeah. Nakaru, um, yeah. Yeah, any any character that has been in KOF is is game. Oh, well, maybe not Geese like we just discussed, but you know, just just have like Rugal shows up out of nowhere. <laughs> You know, like there's 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 chances for that stuff to happen. It, it you almost wonder like how much in the Fatal Fury like fandom are they gonna they gonna do because Gauro was a game that was trying to be different where it's like okay we're gonna get rid of a lot of the legacy stuff and replace them with new characters which is kind of what Street Fighter Three was doing at the time which is almost yeah, the motivation for, sure. for the game. But yeah. now it's like people like those characters so just give me skeleton geese. Fuck it, just give me or, give me geese in a wheelchair. Or yeah. <laughs> Or Krauser, or like 
Yeah, yeah Krauser. Wolfgang Krauser, but it's like a, his ghost. Like he's wearing like a white sheet and everything. Exactly. Just because they're dead doesn't mean they're not like, you know. Dead. Th I can. I want to play as like an ethereal ghost version of the character. They never died. His anger no kept them alive into the afterlife. Uh, so, moving on. What else one, do we have? One more thing. Go one ahead. more thing. We all know a dream match, right? Yeah, dream and match. when yep. you first fought Ryo Sakazaki in Fatal Fury Special, would say dream match. Oh, yeah. Because they didn't even have a... When you fought Geese for the first time in a game where he was canon dead, it said nightmare match. Nightmare and that's match. the best. <laughs> I think that's match. where the name probably came from. Anyway, let's move on. So, Justin, I know you had a... Uh, I think both of you guys had a ton of time to play uh, even a bit more Project L at EVO, right? Oh, I, I did, for sure. You did? I, and I, I, played, I, I, played I did not get to that booth in time. Oh, you didn't get to that booth? Okay, so no. me, me and Justin, we, we went over all of our impressions of the game. I think a lot of the stuff we'd just, because we we have Yasuo footage and we were able to put that stuff up. We also played Yasuo at the previous event, like a whole bunch. Um, and I think most of our impressions still just stand, where it's like, yeah, a lot, a lot more people that are getting their hands on the game kind of have been saying the same thing that me and Justin have saying, where it's like, it's really fun, it's great, but it's still kind of early. You get your ass mauled in this game. You, yep. The defensive mechanics are very expensive. So I think that's still the same thing we can sort of echo, is that uh, that's a, hopefully that changes in the future. Yeah, I think so. Like, uh, the fact that Yasuo came out, I know people are hyped just because, like, a lot of people that didn't see him, and you see him play, it really does remind you of kind of like a like a Virgil, like Virgil from Marvel Three, because Marlon Pie was a, was the the one that really helped design this character to to where he is now. Yeah, uh, right? I, I I it's funny. Like the more I I was like, there's something really familiar about Yasuo, and I just can't pinpoint it. Uh, yeah. And chat made me realize, and and chat's like, this character is on some Shadow Ranger shit, and I'm like. Oh my god, you're right. Like the whole sword in stance and like chop stuff. I'm like, dude, you're absolutely right. Like Shadow Ranger came out in Power Rangers Battle for the Grid, and it isn't identical, but I'd say of all the characters, even the Virgils, all that comparative stuff, like the Zeros, no, no, no. If you want to if you want an early look at what Yasuo kind of plays like, you should check out Shadow Ranger in uh the, the blue dog guy with yeah, the cool yeah. blue dog suit in Battle oh. for the Grid. Very similar. Hmm. So Yasuo was kind of a big hit. I think a lot of people were looking forward to this character. Um, you know, we got new Yasuo mains all over the place. So a new toxic era is uh, among us, from what I understand about League of Legends. He's, he's, exactly. He's, 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 he's the, the same swag. thing. Yeah, he's the swag character. I hear the same thing that like, oh, that's so this, this some guy's a piece of shit asshole must be a Yasuo main or something like that, where that's like just a common thing. Um, but I think it looks great, and I I feel like uh, I got impressions from all the guys, and you know Simmons got to play it as well, and apparently he was having a great time. So nice. I I and I, I think the devs were onto something there that that duos mode is really the the bridge of like the casuals because it's a game that's very aggressively unfriendly for casuals, but when you introduce duos and all the camaraderie that happens and. Dude, how long have we been saying this for so many years? Where it's like, dude, versus games, let us play with our friends, man. Like, yeah. this is the perfect opportunity for it. And the Project mm -hmm. L guys get that. And they've created a game that does that very well. So it still needs work, in our opinion. It still is like early, but damn, is it fun. And a lot of people are saying the exact same thing. Yeah, I actually had a lot more fun playing duels this time around. Yep. Um, I was playing with uh, Nerd Josh, and we were playing with uh, two, of my, two of my mods. And um, I was, it was me and my mod versus Nerd Josh and my other mod. And literally, like, anytime me and Nerd Josh would fight, we would fight. And then eventually I would tag in the mod or he would tag in the mod. And then we'll let them find everything. Yep. And it was a lot more fun that way. So yeah. I could definitely see duels being, like, a more popular thing, bringing people together. Just because it's like, now... You don't have to suffer alone. You don't have to get mauled alone. That's really what it comes down to. And the other big thing, you don't have to learn two characters. Yeah. And that's so, that's a big... That's a, a part of all tag fighting games that you have to wrestle is that you're inherently creating a big barrier between yourself and the casual audience when you have to learn the moveset and all the functionality between each character uh, and how they work together. So, yeah, it's a good call. Like... It was it was fun in Street Fighter Cross Tekken. It was probably one of the coolest parts of that game. It was something we all <laughs> hoped was going to be in Marvel Infinite and was teased and then just didn't happen. And now it's like, yeah, man, just... And you know what I hope the most? Here's what my big prayer is. Hopefully the Project L devs are listening. Um, stick that shit into single-player modes, right? If you want to put yeah. co-op modes and stuff in your game, or let me and a friend fight like bosses or whatever. Yeah. If you want single-player stuff, like... 
dramatic battle is some of the most fun shit out there in fighting games. Now you have a team game that could specifically set up for that. So just give us a cool mode where both characters are on screen beating the shit out of some dickhead in League of Legends. I don't know. Yeah, dramatic battle fuse. It doesn't narrow it down. Yeah, pretty much. They need to, if there's another fuse with dramatic battle, then there is. And then, you know, there actually is a that type of boss in League of Legends. Is there? Uh, yeah, like literally at, towards like a late game, you fight this giant like worm and you once you kill them, the whole the whole team has to fight it. And then you get a big power up and then you kind of like kind of win after that. That's yeah, that bit, sounds like a, exactly what would be good for single player style or co-op online yeah. style content. So it's like so it could be like a Galactus style boss where it's just, yeah. just like exactly. Massive, okay. Cool, or you cool, work cool. together with your friend to, to F them up. Yeah, mm. pretty much. That would be oh. pretty cool. Yeah. Well, I didn't get to play it. I will uh, quote a review of Project L from one Mr. Guile Winquote, uh, who said, I don't like League. I never liked League. In fact, I hate League. I love this game. <laughs> <laughs> He's very, very happy with it. Um, so I was, I was kind of impressed by that. Just like, it, it's a weird thing because these characters are so, a lot of them are so like visually cool and that's enough for people that don't even play or, or know what League is to yeah. like get in on it. But even if the opposite is true, where I don't like these characters or I don't like the, this game, but the gameplay of this fighting game is so tight and I like it so much that I'm going to try it out. So, so big it's, ups to him. It's a game for like anybody that like enjoys that part of fighting games that just gives you a little bit of that freedom. You know, it's a game that in immediately you see that <laughs> like just, mm. just in terms of how you can time things, where that timing window is available. You're already, you're already like, Oh, okay. You're letting us, you're letting us cook. Thank you. You know? Yeah. I'm excited to see like future characters, future mechanics added into the game. But like right now it's just like when I talk to people, they just love dashing wave yep. dashing mm. and everything it, it i'm like yeah you're right it's actually very addicting just a wave dash in this game for some nope. reason well on that on that note before we move on my favorite mobility thing in project l was actually the the backwards wave dash oh retreating guard retreat not not retreating guard just holding back oh, and then two yeah. attacks uh, okay, and you okay. didn't have to like crouch oh. cancel it like you do with like dante and marvel 3 no you can just hold back and they would hop 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 and move backwards if you do forwards yeah. you got to hop down hop down hop down marvel 2 style right um uh, but being able to move backwards that fast i was like ooh, that's really fun that's something in other fighting games you, you can't do outside of like plinking yeah that's true you're right about that I can see that. Uh, so, yeah, Project L was kind of a hit, and there was a lot of gameplay. People were streaming it. My friends were streaming it. Justin was streaming it. They got new footage all over the place, so it's everywhere now. It's awesome. Um, Undernight 2 was also announced, or a new, like, big update to, to Undernight. And according to the devs and, and some people's impressions, this is, a, this is a big announcement, the biggest part of the announcement, uh, fully integrated rollback netcode. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. That, that, was, that was great, because, like, this squad announced like Friday morning, like really very early, early, very early. So like I didn't, and I didn't like they had it at the booth, but they didn't have it at the booth before they announced it. So I guess it was hidden or like they replaced it once they got announced. Um, but people were able to play it. I I didn't get a chance to play it. Um, but I mean, it, Undernight in general, it's a beautiful game. I always love playing it. So the fact that it has rollback, yeah, sign me up. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I I it's one of those games. I think I tried in Kido. When, when I first played it, like in 2017, it's been a long time. And nothing, yeah. it just didn't like like hit with me. And knowing that it had like funky online, I just didn't come back to it. It's one of those games that's like, you know, it's a very anime like influenced game. It's in the same perspective of like uh like like a Melty Blood or like an Arcana Heart. But like this is, but this is the anime game that like diehard fighting game fans always sing its praises where it's like, you will fall in love with gameplay of this yeah. game. It's really well thought out. And, so, and there's some crazy characters in there, not there just is. like the standard, like, you know, uh, characters in like school uniforms. Not like, everybody is you know, that. Gu guy yeah. with a sword. Like, there's guy some with weirdos. A sword. Yeah, yeah, weirdos. Yeah, weirdos. Yeah. There's some like weird, like, what's the arm guy doing all the crazy, like, arm uh, shit? Yeah. You know, there's there, there's a lot of like fun, fun stuff in this game. And the fact that, you know, it's community, which is, which has always had great competitive representation. It's one of those games that you have to like recommend to people to try it out, like give it a shot. Yeah, and I'm, sure. I'm going to be obviously trying it out and giving it a shot again when when the game does get rollback netcode. So I'm looking forward to it. Mm. What character were you were you playing the 
I I only tried one. like I thought en en Enkidu I think it was his name oh, looked cool. Okay. And yeah. then, but mm -hmm. his but his overall gameplay was kind of funky and I was like Ugh, it didn't it didn't hit with me in the ways I wanted it to. You know you know I think it's a max character uh, Gordo. Gordo? Oh yeah, Gordo. Gambit. Oh yeah, Gordo. yeah, yeah. Yeah, that. yeah. That's the character you want. I think Gordo. he has a Gambit color too. I, I, yeah, he, he does. does. He did. I, I played. I played Gordo in <laughs> uh, BB Tag. Yeah. And uh, that was that was fun. But I think I played BB Tag after I played uh, after I played like Under Night for the first time. So yeah. yeah, I think I would if I didn't have to learn multiple characters, I'd probably just play that dude. Yeah, I think he's pretty that, good too. That's a that's a max character. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so let's see what else we got because there was literally a billion oh, announcements. Everything. Um, other big news, uh, Tekken 8 got Coffee Chick and, uh, you know, Wesley Snipes this, is back. This character, Coffee Chick, is fucking cash money. <laughs> okay, look, okay. All right. I, she, she's, she's sick. But the first time I saw her, I thought there was Laura. Low key. Dude, the I hair was set Zafina. to the side. Yep. I was like, yep. The pose really? and everything. I yeah. was like, Laura? Yeah, I it's thought just, I, got, like, I got me mega Laura yeah. vibes from her. Yeah, and chat, and, ch and chat was like, bro, she's not Brazilian. I'm like, I know that. I she's know she's not, from but she has that same like energy but, yeah, about she got her. The look, mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. look, the hair, even the clothes, like the way it's like, it's not green, it's red. But if you if you think about it, it's kind of a similar clothing thing as well, yeah. too. And Laura's like, you know, you don't love fighting? You're a dumb bitch. Let me beat you up. And this chick yeah. is like, you don't love coffee? You're a dumb bitch. Drink that shit. <laughs> like, yeah, there yeah, are yeah. very similar, like, character personas going on there. But yeah, she yeah, is yeah. she is doing something, like, genuinely different than we've ever seen Tekken characters do. She seems to be like an auto, uh, like an auto parry kind of character. Yo, yeah, she which is going to be weird. I, I think it's just like a stance state where she just auto deflects <laughs> and maybe is weak to grabs or something like that. Like that you know right and her name is azucena azucena yeah. Azu 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 okay um yeah i first saw this character and i i yeah i didn't think laura but yeah she totally has that energy of her i thought it was like zafina suddenly like just got just decided to hawk coffee all of a sudden oh. at first and i was like oh okay that's a new look for her i'm oh wait no it's a new character it's a good thing you didn't but, say that publicly matthew or all, or all the tekken <laughs> stands yeah yeah you yeah. would be beheaded in front of an audience of millions <laughs> big, big, um, te big tekken fan over here <laughs> but uh the the stage and everything and just i like I like sometimes when they just go, this character's gimmick is this. Yeah. They really yeah. like this item or cooking or whatever it is. And sometimes it sometimes <clears> it comes <throat> off as a little forced and sometimes it just works. And I don't know what it is, but it just kind of works here. Or I'm it like, great. she's it the perfect great. The perfect blend, and then after like her winning perfect animation, blend. perfect blend, blend. When her winning animation is like an ad for the coffee, mwah, yeah. Arata, you've right. done it again. Chef's kiss. <laughs> and I have to give like like shout out again. Raven and Master Raven have historically not been like characters that that have always been kind of like oh their gameplay is weird and uh, it looks kind of hard to like get in get into their gameplay mm -hmm. so that's always thrown me off in terms of them and like Tekken Five and you know obviously Tekken Seven but goddamn dude the way Raven looks with all the shadow clone shit I'm like yeah so that, exactly as you were saying they're going hard on a gimmick right and Raven's new gimmick is that he has these shadow clones that do all this wild and shit for him was there a little bit with Master Raven in obviously like Tekken Tekken 7 to a degree and yeah. Kunimitsu has had some of that kind of stuff too uh god damn does he look so sick in this game so I'm I'm yeah. really excited with that Raven trailer you know Bandai Namco said bro we own Naruto games why don't we make Raven like from Naruto bro that pretty much that's what they did. They just gave him everything from the Leaf Village. They, he, he learned from the Hokage himself <laughs> and did all this crazy shit. And I'm like, oh, this is a evolution of a character. All right, this is a, definitely the one. Yep. So yeah, Raven came out swinging. Raven got all the tech from Lars when Lars visited that weird arc of no. his anime journey. <laughs> Yeah, he, he, when he would visit Konoha, yeah. yeah. He he even gives a bit of storyline explanation. He just says, "My my ninjutsu has really leveled up." Like, yeah, yeah. He's like, "I've been grinding all these years." <laughs> like, and and I was like, "Okay, yeah." Like, I like it when a character actually acknowledges, "I'm better than before." Like, I did like improve a bit. Like, it, sometimes they just don't acknowledge it. Like, oh yeah, I'm you know, the, no one says anything. I got these crazy new powers. No one really gives an explanation. But he's just like, "Yeah, I was training. That's it." You know. It, Pretty did cool. you did you uh, play uh, Tekken Eight at 
at Evo by any chance, Matt, or 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 no? At Evo, no, but I I did do the um the network test. Okay, because like I was just wondering, because I think maybe, um, Bandai Namco was the only booth that that you were able to play the new game, but didn't have like new A stuff, or? like new stuff. Oh, right. Because like Mortal Kombat 1, you could play like Johnny Cage and Lee May. Right? Yeah, I think so, they just had like beta characters uh, from what yeah, I recall. Beta characters. OK. Yeah. It, since since the network test just just happened, like I'm assuming it was the exact same build and we're not missing something, right? Yeah, I don't think so. No, uh, it was it was pretty much the same build. Yeah. I, I, no one's had hands on time with any of like the, the brand newer characters that were just shown off. So you, you, you guys didn't miss anything, What you what you might have missed was the stage presentations that Bandai Namco had for Tekken 8, which was a couple of them. And uh, just to yeah. quickly go over them, we were hoping we were going to hear all these wonderful advancements and the stuff that they learned from the beta and how they're going to improve it and make quality of life better for all of us. Uh, unfortunately, we got 45-minute discussions on how bad it is to use Wi-Fi. Oh my and God. how much that uh, really messes with everything and how many people are using Wi-Fi and how they're shocked that that many people can use Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi and to stop doing it. Please stop. Um... So that was interesting. Uh, uh, and, and You know, pe- people are very sensitive about that type of stuff. Every time I talk about that on stream, they're like, yo, what do you have against us Wi-Fi players? And I'm like, I mean, it's just not good for fighting games. Like, but yo, like, that's my life. Like, I can't do anything about it. I'm like, well, keep playing what you want to do. I'm just telling you that I, I would right. rather play somebody with Wired. It, it, yeah, I mean, and you're, granted, it, it, you have to... You have to understand it comes from a perspective of of privilege for sure. If you have like a wired connection and a decent internet connection, it's like, yeah, of course, I just want to play other people like this and everything should just accommodate us because we are doing great. But, you know, financially, a lot of people just don't have the ability. Yeah. They live in flats or they live with na- like neighbors and stuff. Or, I'm sorry, they live with like roommates and they cannot change that. Like, I, I don't I don't control what the modem does. Like, I just yeah. get Internet and I have nothing. I can- That's like a very large percentage of this United States and even <laughs> Canada and places that aren't like Asian like territory and regions. So where the infrastructure is much better. Um, so you gotta like, I kind of sympathize in a way where it's like, I think the solution should be to, to solve around this problem instead of pinpointing this problem, you know, that exists where it's like, well, I can't afford a house, then go buy a house. <laughs> like, it's like, yeah. well, I can't like, so can we do something about it? So I'm going to, uh, out myself here when I moved into this current condo I'm in, I was like, yeah, this is going to be my office, this room right here. And there's no way it won't have a phone line connection somewhere. Nope. The only place that has one is the closet in the master bedroom. That's like through two walls that way. Yeah. Nice. And I'm just like, I, I can't do it. When, when I do get a house one day, I'll make that a priority. But there are situations where it's like, I just, I just, I'm at this stage in my life where it, it cannot happen yep. or it cannot, it doesn't make sense to do it right now. But I'm I'm looking forward to the future where I can be as privileged as these two gentlemen here. <laughs> well, you know, like or we, or they could just be like Capcom and make the best netcode because I kid you not, I had the Street Fighter Six fever before Evo. I was at the airport and I said, "Hey, let me try out airport Wi-Fi." I remember this tweet and of it yours. Just worked, and it worked yeah. fantastic. I was I was I was I got I got some master rank points out of it, and I'm like. This net code is crispy. Uh, I love it, it. It was 2015. I was streaming Killer Instinct, and I fought. I fought him. One of our mods who I think lived in like the, around the Middle East, uh, which is pretty far from where I live. To to be blunt, and I think he was playing on Wi-Fi, and there was some hitches every once in a while. There was some rollbacks, but it was completely playable. I was able to break yep. mediums and stuff. So. So, I just genuinely disagree in the fact that like we need to highlight the fact that you're using Wi-Fi and to get you to change that instead of instead of them creating a product exactly. that works yeah. around everybody's everybody's needs, right? Having a 45 minute presentation saying, "Hey, there's going to be issues and we can't really do much. Maybe you guys can help." Yeah. By like, you know, 
moving somewhere else. That that screams <laughs> like the uh, you know the it's like the, the recycling issue of like the seventies and eighties, where you know what was the reason we started getting into the recycling boom as like humanity was because Coca Cola and all these goddamn soda companies were being charged an ass and a leg about them you know fucking up the environment, so they have to get people to start mm -hmm. recycling. It's you. You're yeah. the one that needs to do it, not us. It's you. Never mind the 70% of all pollution is done <laughs> yeah. by these three companies. It's you. Namco, you, you help. Namco, don't you be do one it. of these companies. <laughs> don't, I mean, they, they did a 45-minute presentation of it. <laughs> and the other the part problem of that, is you. The other, the other part of that presentation is um, the, the character usage charts. So let's just keep this in the top, like, two characters from the betas. Did you guys see which were the most popular characters in the Tekken? I don't know. You didn't? Okay. No. So I know who they are. Um, who do you, Justin, who do you think is the second most popular character in the Tekken 8 beta? Let me look the it up beta. again, just to be sure. Uh, I would assume number one is Jin. For sure. um, and then number two... Paul? That, and I thought the same thing. I thought, like, Paul was going to be a really, really popular character. Uh, Matt, who do you think, like, one and two are? I think two is Kazuya. And one, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a dark horse here just because I fought him a bunch when I played. Uh, the uh, first is Lars. Lars, okay. So number one is 100% Jin, because <laughs> oh, okay. of course Jin is still the Tekken character and has been that fucking way since Tekken he's Three. So, he's so cool, and he's so cool. And granted, he's he's better than he has been since like Tekken Five, like visually, right? Even though he was ass in Tekken Five Vanilla. Uh, and number two was Kazuya. So okay, Mishima's okay. reign one. supreme. Uh, number three, I thought was pretty surprising. And now that I think about it, it's like, you know what? Yeah, even back to the 90s, this character when he was new was a huge casual bait character and his design is going back to that old one. It's Warong. Wow. Huh. Warong was number really? three most used in and the beta. And he's hard to use too. Yeah, he's he was a lot. To use, yeah. And believe it or not, after that was even King. So then King is a huge casual bait character in Tekken. Yeah. So. That's thank you, little Majin. Yeah, uh, yep. you have to go all the way back to like number nine and ten are Paul and Lars, so they're wow. way down there, dude. And then the it's least because of that, it's, it's because of that the... Paul redesign. Yes. Yes. He'd be the higher hair. up if he had the flat top. He might he might? And then at the bottom was no shit. Leroy, Nina, and Xiaoyu. Nina. Yeah. Wow. At the bottom. I'm surprised by that. It, I, that, Nina's kind of surprising to me. I thought she was more popular just overall. Yeah, I thought she was very popular. L Leroy makes sense just because he's the newest, like yeah. Yeah, one of the new. newest characters. So. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the, another surprising one, Asuka was number eleven, and I thought I always thought Asuka was a much more popular character in, in right, Tekken what, in general. What, what about the mob? What about the mob? Where's she at? Uh, June is number six, and she, Ooh, I, I fought her the okay. most for sure. Yeah, she's cleansing that ass yeah. at number six. She, she cleansed that ass. And then, I, I did. I did fight Jin the most though. Yeah, and then and then Brian was number five, but Jin was crazy good in the beta. Like, if there was if yeah. there was a couple characters that were super OP as shit, like Jin was definitely like overtuned uh, in this version of the beta. Oh, I was getting smoked by his electrics. I was like, oh, you could combo off his electrics now. Yep. I'm like. When did they do that? It, it took it took it takes like the 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 tailspin. It takes like the yeah. screw, but it's, you could still get like fifty to sixty damage, like no problem. Yeah, it's crazy. So I was like, okay, and his like that low move he does. It's oh, like the claw. It, yeah, I'm like disgusting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's disgusting. It's so good. So <laughs> disgusting I see, claw. I, I can see why he 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 was number one because he was such a easy care not a, like he's an easy care to understand and he's so cool and did they make like if you're in the the heat mode like his electrics are easy yes right? yeah all, his electrics are pretty much guaranteed they're guaranteed yes. to get the good electrics in heat mode yeah. it takes off like a small chunk um there you go. i think it's also the fact that Jin, historically like in the past few games has been a really difficult character to be good with and from yeah. and i think that that is bandai namco answering a call to that everybody likes Jin. But he had the lowest win rate of any character in Tekken 7. Because so oh, many really? people play Jin, but he's he's really hard to actually eventually be good with. At high level, he's insane. He's actually top tier as like shit. But to get to that point is just gonna take so much fucking time and execution. Yeah. So I think they I think they wanna change that. I think they wanna make him, you know, they're obviously trying to make him more quote unquote accessible by still giving him crazy new things, you know? Yeah. Which is kind of a good call. I think that makes sense. 
Um, yeah. So uh, that was that was new characters of Tekken Eight. Holy shit! Where the hell are we on this thing? Uh, yeah, Goddamn! I guess we just talk about Street Fighter, right? <laughs> And I guess. Uh, I guess. Uh, so, Street Fighter, the Ninja Turtles, how are we feeling, Matthew? How expensive are these again? They're these not Ninja cheap. Turtle skins? They're 15 bucks a piece. I heard someone say 25 and I like almost did a spit take. It's uh, like $15. Then, yeah. then I saw it was 15 15 was like, they, okay. They're pretty Thank much you. like Call of Duty skin priced. So, I think. These are cool in the sense that they look a lot like the TMNT designs from the Tournament Fighters games uh, by Konami. Yeah. They have like the, the white eyes and stuff. And I love how some of the animations <laughs> and some of the super animations really work with these characters. Like not all, obviously, but like some super animations look like, oh, a turtle would do that. But this is still one of the most random, like early on things i've ever seen added to a fighting game like this is like season four shit it feels like a down the line collaboration yeah. yeah yeah and i guess we can expect more of this now like in like six months there's gonna be like i don't know what's the uh, so i think squid squid power game rangers. season two yeah power <laughs> rangers or some shit power so rangers. here yeah that makes sense good call here's a weird uh thought process I'm, maybe Ninja Turtles isn't the thing that gets me super excited for Street Fighter, although it is a cool collaboration. Um, you know what Ninja Turtles makes me excited for? City of the Wolves. Where Why? I think there's going to be a collab between SNK and Capcom. Because there's already been a bunch of teases in Street Fighter 6. There's literally like Robert Garcia costumes and stuff yeah. like that in trailer. Oh, so yeah. I, and the Capcom and SNK have been buddy buddy. So I think by the time City of the Wolves comes out, there might be like a collab or something with you get character costumes and stuff that you can give your creative dickhead. They okay. have been getting way more buddy buddy in like the last year or two. So that, I feel that's, like that's, that's, and maybe just maybe that could be around like other collaboration shit. Like, hey, who knows? Maybe remind you that SNK, Capcom versus SNK stuff does exist. And maybe there's crossover between that. So this Turtles thing happened just as that new Turtles CGI movie came out. Correct. So when City of the Wolves eventually releases, like, yeah, maybe that, that'll be time because that's very helps. possible. Yeah. Well, oh, that's interesting. It's, weir it's a yeah, weird thought process, but I get really excited about seeing like, oh, man, maybe we get like Terry shit. Maybe we just get Terry's like, you know, just you get his Gauro looking costume or you get his old school costume. Put that on Ken. Yeah, put, put, no, put on Terry's Ken. costume most, on Ken. And, and most likely will be on your creative dickhead. But, you yeah. know, yeah. yeah, still, that's exciting. All right. Mm. So I bought I bought Michelangelo. Right. And uh, I was very excited because I wanted to make him a turtle freak. Freak fight. And, and I was very sad that I could not make him into a turtle freak. You, you have I, those proportions and those proportions like, alone. Yeah, I was literally spent fifteen dollars just to have Michelangelo, but not freaky Michelangelo. I was yep. so upset. Yeah. I was so excited, so ready to play Avatar battles that whole night. And then once I saw that character and I spent fifteen bucks, I hit all F four. <laughs> I was very disappointed. I, I mean, you so, got my money, Capcom, but well, now I know for future collapse, like, I, I won't have a freak of nature. You're very justified in your upsetness, but when I thought about it for a second there, I was like, there's no way any license holder will be like, yeah, that's yeah. fine. Exactly. Stretch out the turtle's penis. I don't care. Like, no one's going to sign off on that, unfortunately, yeah, but exactly. I still would have been cool. I it's thought of it, awesome. though. You know what I mean? I could <laughs> dream. I could dream about it. You and you could still run through World Tour, you know, as a, as a Ninja Turtle through the streets of Metro City, beating up boxhead crime. You know, that's the kind of neat. That's a neat yeah, novelty. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah that's cool. Is. I get that. And there's um, pizza everywhere. The turtles everywhere. can enjoy the hotto pizza. <laughs> the hotto pizza and everything like that. But wait, is fifteen dollars for one turtle skin? One skin. One. I thought you got all fucking four. No, no that what? costs that costs sixty dollars, Matthew. That's crazy. Yo. You gotta pick the you gotta pick your perfect turtle. It's 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 That's pretty rough. crazy. It's like I hope that is because a lot of people got really excited at the the character costume concept art, like like wedding Marissa and all of that stuff that was recently shown mm -hmm. at the Capcom thing. DJ's alt looked amazing. There's some yeah, great stuff there. Giles, Giles, Giles looks was awesome. Granted, there's a lot of really cool shit there, and it's like Oh no, are you gonna charge us arm and a leg for this shit? I I, I asked my Oops. chat, I was like, okay, so what's the barometer here? Like if they're gonna charge us like skins for this, what was the 
what is the acceptable level outside of her should be free what is the acceptable level of obviously like they're going to make dlc and charge you for things because that's the way everything goes and i i think the consensus was five bucks five bucks is about right for one of these turtle skins and five bucks is about right for a character skin in general right if you're gonna give us a nice recreate it our character looks completely different and i we get to have all these colors and all this dumb shit like yes five bucks is about right per character but you have to offer us also a bundle you know there needs to be of a like thing little things exactly yeah. like this turtle thing is kind of crazy because there's no from what i understand there's no bundle you can't like do you have to just fork out 60 bucks no that should be like 30 bucks if you buy all of them you know, something like that. I think the total if you buy everything one by one is a hundred bucks. It's crazy, including yeah. the masks. Yeah, yeah, the, like the mask and the emotes and stickers. It's a hundred dollars for wild. every turtle item. Thing. It's so expensive. It's like, who the fuck are you kidding like, here? Listen, I'll pay that for like the SNK collab or like a Mortal Con. Like I'll pay. You got me. Yeah, but that's right? still. But that still doesn't answer. Like they they would they would no, no, they would have so many more people if it was like moderately priced. Yeah, you'd get you'd get way more sales than trying to like whale people that obviously have to buy it. You know, I'll be a whale for that. But for like for turtles, it's like it's so random. I I love turtles, but like <laughs> I love turtles. Um, but <laughs> it's still crazy high for what's essentially you're not even getting a character like. Yeah. And this is new for Street Fighter, right? Like a character skin from an outside property. Exactly. It's just the skin. That's it's the not first a, time. A, as yes. as another example, I think I think the battle pass they've been doing stuff in Street Fighter. There's been like two or three battle passes so far. Um, I've bought every single one, and I think I've completed them all. Uh, and I'm kind of fine with it. I haven't even customized my create a character yet, but that is a value that makes sense to me where like the battle pass is like kind of moderately priced and they get all these customized character creator things from Rashid's backpack and his headpiece and summer costumes and whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think if it was, if it was like that, that would, you'd get so many more sales, dude. But what this comes across yeah, is like this Nickelodeon shit wasn't cheap. So we have to charge you a goddamn arm and a leg for it. Yeah. That's pretty much what it happened is. Yeah. It, it so. had to be like that. Uh, outside of that, we did get a teaser. There was a nice, uh, big story mode teaser for Aki it's and, uncomfortable. uh, uncomfortable, so <laughs> un it's uncomfortable so teaser. Though. And I, the thing I'm kind of excited about, because there's one thing I'm really not excited about is the fact that, oh, I'm getting mega Fong vibes and you already get that from her concept art. Um, but she seems to be a lot creepier, right? Yeah, she's, she's like, good. I enjoy the smell of death sort of like character instead of like, you know, jury, I'm going to post a match of me stepping on you to Facebook, which is what jury will do. She's a bit, she's a bit kind of a different freaky, like almost like his ways. I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Like jump like scares, scary. Like a horror, a horror ish type. Exactly. Of vibe. I'm down with that. What I, what I, I want them to get as far away from Fung as possible in what gameplay as well. <laughs> yeah. I feel like Fung's great. To, to me, what, what she reminded me of is like, because she had like these claws it, what if she's like a hybrid of Vega and Fong? Yeah. That okay, so that's interesting. Like hyper mobility. Right. Like what? Yeah. Like and that. And, yeah, I'm down with that shit. And and she and does poison, so it's like damage is low, but it's mainly really like a annoying, like a real annoying character. Yeah, but but Rashid got all this high mobility stuff, so I don't yeah, know if it and makes it another sucks. character right. <laughs> yeah. I so poison still seems like a good bet, but. Like it, she makes sense that she'd be high mobility, but I can also see her being low mobility. Like she's methodic and like backs up all oh, creepily. I bet like, like Valdo. Okay. Yeah, like Valdo. Good call. Yeah. Right. I can yeah, see that working. A true well. weirdo character. I think this is Street Fighter Six's weirdo character. Mm. You know. Um. Somebody in my chat was mentioning, uh, if if and I, I was saying if this character just poisons your HP over time, that's just going to be, that is such a not interesting thing that Fong did in Street Fighter Five that it was just like, oh, this is this is actually boring in my opinion. Um, however, if her poison stuff affects your drive gauge, how do you guys feel about that? That'd be sick. I would that's... rather have I would rather have the drive gauge poison instead of life poison. To me, that's yeah. actually interesting too. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. So or what if it's or what if she you know how like she had different like uh pills what if each pill gives a different poison one takes away your bar takes away your meter takes away drive gauge so it's three like uh it's like valentine and uh skull girls yeah so like aki could like put input delay 
Yeah, on, on <laughs> weird <your> shit. shit. <laughs> That's kind of like what Rose did in SF SF five as well, right? Mm. Yeah, yeah. With, with the with the with the cards, the cards. So I think I think with that that would like make it not. It won't be linear. Where it's like, oh yeah, I just poisoned your life. Ha ha. Now you exactly. have to try to get me. There needs to so be think, ways for you to cool. customize your your offense or defense. You know, around Given, this unique bullshit. Given Street Fighter Six's characters already, I'd be shocked, absolutely shocked, if they're like, "Yeah, Aki poisons you. That's it." Like, it, yeah, yeah exactly. I would be shocked and, too. And that's the thing. It's like I don't think they're just gonna fong her. I think they already. I'm pretty what? sure that this fong development, her. this development crew knows that that character was deeply unpopular. So there's got to be a good reason why they want to have like female fong in some way because they're they're like, "We're gonna do it right." Well, <laughs> like that's what it feels it's, like. It's just regular fong didn't look cool. He. He looked like a joke. He'd be like, how about double dose of poison? I'm like, no one's going to take you seriously when you say it like that. Like, come that. on, man. Everyone, and, I hate that fucking character, bro. <laughs> we already did that episode on, on our least favorite fight. Oh, characters. my God. Let's do but, another but here, one. But, <laughs> but here's the thing with him is like makes it worse is like they position him as like, like you see him more than Bison. You fight him more than Bison and yeah. you do in the story mode. So if he was just a background bad guy or just not even part of Shadowloo, like he was just a new character and that was it, it probably would have been fine. But because he was just shoved in your face and up your ass every single chapter of the story mode, it like it it did him a disservice. Yeah. Like he got done dirty as like he didn't do any favors for himself, obviously. Do, 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 I poisoned you. Like it's really <laughs> bad. But at the same time Capcom set him up to fail. Yeah. You know, true. That yeah. Way, so. I mean he's like that one annoying like general, like when you when you see in a movie that doesn't fight at all, but he's like, oh and he needs backup type of thing like yeah nobody likes those type of characters they hate them the um, there, there, there's a fan for everyone though and i, I, I here now that we've seen like half of the dlc characters for this first like year of street fighter 6 dlc uh it's funny that i'm actually looking forward to ed more than aki I, i'm kind of curious what the hell they're going to do with ed because ed had really interesting gameplay in street fighter 5 with yes, an absolute controls. terrible design Right, where yeah. I hate the way he looks so much in that game. I can never play this character based on how he looks. I'm, yeah, I'm cause, just cause, sorry. Oh. Go ahead, Justin. No, I'm saying I'm just curious on like how they're gonna make modern controls Ed when he's already modern controlled. Classic. Exactly. <laughs> um, when we first talked about the DLC characters, I think we went around all three of us, and all three of us said, "I'm the least excited for Ed. I would rather Ed be switched out for somebody else." And now. Now we're That's here because because now because it's like I know I'll probably like Akuma, but I can kind of we can kind of more or less expect to have like one new gimmick or whatever. But it's like how are they going to make Ed interesting or more interesting? And like yeah, I'm I'm more excited to see that. And and his costume is so much better yeah. than what he had. Like Rashid's default costume is so much cooler. And he's so much hotter than he was than he was before. So like you give me really, really hot Ed that looks super cool, like yeah, I'll play him. I'll yeah. play him no problem. I think I think they're probably gonna get something pretty surprising with that character. Um Oh god, what the hell is next? Uh Mortal Kombat. So yeah, a lot of Mortal Kombat stuff. There was this killer instinct update. So moving on to Mortal Kombat. Uh we don't need to talk about the other thing. Uh Oh, you mean when you when you like just lie to what? our faces what? about Killer Instinct? What? What? I, I can't hear you, Justin. I think your mic's not working. Guys. It's weird. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't hear him either. It's weird. I just oh. don't know what's going on. Uh, oh, no, no, no. Yeah, I it's guess. just some small thing. Killer Instinct is actually getting an update five years later. Iron Galaxy's back. Yada yada yada. Yeah, yeah okay. I know, right? Like, it, for every, <laughs> first time, everyone heard heard of that, right? At the same time, at Evo. It's crazy. I filmed. I I was actually like, I had to step away from my desk to to come back and talk about it because I heard about it twenty seconds before it was announced. So, so they brought you in live, live at Evo. Yeah, oh, new new amazing. satellite technology, right? Oh, nice. That was Max. That was I was literally meeting up with Bruno. Uh, it like on the show floor to yeah. say hi what's up and like i'm meeting up with him and, and the ki exhibition had just just finished so i see your face show up on the big screen and everyone like big pop right and i go oh that motherfucker I i'm sorry like i i'm i am i'm sorry i can't like the, NDA. The, it needs to be a surprise of like course. people gotta be surprised by it and you know of it's course. a big it's a big deal but then but then i just so happened because i thought in my head 
oh, uh, it's, you know, the 2023 is the 10th anniversary of KI. It's uh, Evo week. Um, I'll just make a retrospective of Killer Instinct that will go up the day after this announcement. I didn't know it was going to happen. And at the end of that video, I go, hey, it'd be cool if there was like a KI thing. Oh, it'd be cool if I could predict that. And now I look suspicious. <laughs> like Max told you. I'm like, you're tell me shit, man. <laughs> yeah, I, but, yeah, I mean, granted. Amazing regardless. The you, you have to realize, like, and all I was doing was just setting you guys up for how impossible that shit is. Getting a Killer Instinct announcement at a Sony event where we're already getting a Killer Instinct, like, showcase debut thing that. at a Sony yeah. event was pretty like, wow, how is that happening? Much less uh, an update to KI five years down the line where the developer has long since passed with the game and that is also impossible so it's like who's going to be working on it like a japanese dev or what to have like all of these stars align again in some way to to get killer instinct back is truly like crazy so when yeah even i can just i can't tell you any new information that microsoft has not already given but mm -hmm. I can say that, like, it's it's a stars aligned kind of situation. And I was blown away when I heard about it. I'm like, they, they immediately want, want to know, it's like, how do you think this is going to gonna go? Because I have to, like, make the video, right? And figure out how to present this info, even though we don't have, like, a lot of stuff to show. And it's like, I think if, if it's at this event and it, and it goes down this way, people are going to be pretty goddamn excited. Just, yeah, you, and... you, you tell KI fans, KI is getting something new in any way, they're going to be super happy. And that shit was maximized too, because you had uh, James Goddard and then Keats show up. So that's like, here's, you know, not more content per se, but here's more people to talk about it. Exactly. As people know and, and respect and everything. So uh, I, I, you know, expect it kind of when you showed up and you like throw to someone like James Goddard. Okay. Yeah. No, he totally worked on it, but I was not expecting. Keats and Iron Galaxy. To Iron be, Galaxy to be part for of Keats it to again. be like, you know, we're back, we're working on Killer Instinct is like, yeah, that's that's like, oh, and outside of like even my official, you know, like I integration into KI over the past 10 years in any way, um, hearing that Killer Instinct like might be going to Japan or something that like a, a dev outside that they're looking for a developer because obviously IG was super busy over the past many years, right? So what the hell's going to happen to KI? Uh, learning that ig is back in some way i think is personally for me best case scenario because mm -hmm. in terms of like actual killer instinct in the future that these are the devs that should be doing it 100 percent. if they if they get better budget if it stays lower budget like whatever it doesn't matter in my perspective the people that should be moving ki forward with whatever it turns into should be iron galaxy because they turned it into what it is today you know yeah so that to me was like this is like best case scenario situation. Like granted, like Rumbleverse, I wish continued and went went forward. And but if that whatever happened with Epic or whatnot, you know, happened to open them up to work on this, it's like, geez, I think it's like the best thing that could have happened outside of a really bad scenario. So for those that maybe not caught this announcement, it's basically going to be a balance uh, update, not even a patch, a balance update, which sounds really exciting with yeah. the possibilities of it. The 4K support on consoles, which I didn't even know this. I just assume because it still <laughs> looks pretty good that it runs on 4K on, on Xboxes. But no, I think it's upscaled maybe. It is upscaled. That does not run native okay. 4K. Okay. Yeah, and uh, and and improve matchmaking too. Yeah, so they all good calls. The big stuff they're announcing right now is it's quote unquote a tenth anniversary update, and as Matt said, yeah, like uh, official support for new systems. There's a huge behind the scenes thing that we've talked about previously on the podcast that is allowing it to still function in this day and age, and the the balance update for the roster. So that's all they're announcing right now. They'll be back with more information later. Yeah, um, I I'm just asking again it would be really cool if the rest of the little bits of, that are missing in in the core game a lot of characters not a lot but a couple characters still don't have their own dedicated stages um ultimates being given to every character in the game and the last few like one or two characters that don't have a full um uh, accessories options, sh yeah. Shadow Jago. I think there's one other character, but may maybe it's just Shadow Jago. And it's like if that could, if the the success of this pa uh, balance update, like moderate success. I, I don't know how they would judge this, um, but I would just, oh, I would love that if all that stuff gets filled out, and then see what the future for Ki is after that. But just this, just what they've announced so far, I'm like still over the moon about it because it's still going to bring people back to it. 
Yeah. Um, and the, the only other thing I ever see people talk about is, man, I really want to play this, but I don't have a good PC and I don't have an Xbox console. Mm -hmm. And even though Microsoft hasn't done this in a while, I think the last time was one of the Ori games coming to Switch. The Switch. Yeah, it it would be really cool if okay, I could somehow get onto other consoles. That would be as well, crazy. Yeah, that'd be super sick. Yeah, I would be almost so for, for I would, the community. Uh, we're so on the cusp of next hardware for Nintendo that's as true. well that who knows? Like maybe that is something that's a possibility in the future because I've been harking the same shit for years as well. That like, man, just let's just put this shit on the Switch, man. Come on, hmm. everything needs it, to be on the Switch. It yeah. it did so well for MK11. <laughs> it, and you know what? We can't Dragon Ball Fighters it, it and MK11, it had a significant impact for the sales of both yeah. of those games. Mm -hmm. uh, outside of that, yeah, Mortal Kombat, everything. The the Reptile trailer was shown off at Evo. Reptile is literally Sick. better looking than he ever has been. That was so good, yeah. yeah. What a good call for this character. The, the perfect mixture of like a weird lizard guy that, you know, if it was that alone, people would be pissed. If it's him as a human form alone, most people would be kind of happy with that, but still some people would be pissed. The the best in between. But also his human form is hot too. He's fucking he's like a hot he's, little guy. They made I him like fuckable. It. That's he's what a, you wanted. He's a K-pop star. Yeah, exactly. He, there's something about him. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that, that's this is probably one of the best changes they've done to a character in the new timeline, whatever. I agree. Yeah. So uh Ashra as well. Um, uh, yeah, Natara was in that trailer too, or maybe that was Scorpion. I, mean, I think it was female Scorpion, right? Female I don't Scorpion. know. I'm gonna touching, go with female Scorpion. Touching upon this in a serious manner for just one second, literally when Ashra appears, she looks nothing like Ashra. She does not have. Where's the, the hat? She does not have the hat that she had for her entire run in the 3D games. Her face is all fucked up and weird. She her her new backstory is cool. It's like now I am a demon that's slowly transitioning into being a human because I'm killing other demons. Before she was just a regular human that was a demon hunter. Maybe I can't remember if oh if people come for me too. Uh, maybe I can't remember if she was a demon and she was killing demons back then. But I recall her I just thought, being a demon hunter. I thought Nataro was the demon chick. She has like wings and shit. Yeah, she's the one. She's the wings, a vampire. Right? She's a she was a vampire. And okay. again, to be fair, this is a race of vampires that was never mentioned before in Mortal Kombat games, and they were never mentioned after the 3D era. It was like you know the Shokans, the Tarkatans. In the 3D era, there's vampires too, and they're just <laughs> they've just been over there. Um, Serena is the one that, and big ups to Ketchup for calling this. He put a video, it's like 3D characters I want back. And he said, it'd be really cool if Serena came back and she has a devil, uh, demon form. It literally yeah. is that. Because she, Serena's included in the GBA, one of the GBA games and Mortal Kombat Armageddon. She's just a chick that yeah. like has moves. That's what yeah, I remember. Her lore, Yeah. Her lore states she's a half demon that works for Quan Chi. And Ketchup said it'd be really cool if she could like turn into a demon during her moves and stuff. That's exactly what they did. And that's and she's cool. like a hot devil babe. Too. That, hot devil that, babe. That was my memory of like when I would usually get Lee Mei and Serena like mixed up in the old 3D era games because they did very similar. They just punched. They just, they just punched, punched and, and kicked, kicked you. So it's like gameplay wise, there was nothing really identifying like what's unique about these characters, like especially like an Armageddon. It's like, no, they're like the same thing, just different names. Yeah. So but now they, they're, they're obviously Lee Mei is more of a punch girl, but she's like astral projection, you know, like cool looking animal punch girl now with fireworks. Yeah. And they're literally turning Serena into an, an, a, a walking devil girl. You better hope that they don't put Kira in this. And that that's another one where Kira is the same. The Kira is like the same thing where it's like there were so many of the, the female MK characters around that 3D era that just sort of blend together. Where it's like they, they don't add any uniqueness to, to them outside of Kira, like story. Kira is a black dragon member that throws knives and kicks. Yep. That's she, was, she was she was girl Kano. <laughs> she was girl Kano. She was girl Kano, right? Yeah, she's a girl Kano. Yeah. I, there was no Kano in in uh, um, Deception, so Deception. like here's a bunch of uh, here's a bunch of like Black Dragon people. Um, anyway, yeah, like Ashra, and then uh, there was one more. Oh yeah, Havoc. 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 Yeah, Havoc looks amazing, dude. Uh, talk about like a like a character that is gonna be definitely benefited from the modern era of like game visuals and stuff. There's so many crazy like secondary animations of him breaking his neck and ripping off his arm and all this insanely cool shit. And I I think visually he's one of the better looking characters in the whole game. 
Yeah, when he, when he calls in a cameo, look, one of the summon cameos, he just breaks his own neck because he's not being used at that particular second. I'm like, oh, that's super smart. That's super. That's like, really <laughs> well, even even when he does his like fatal blow, he just rips off his arm and just smacks you with it. Like yeah. that's I'm like, oh, he just so this guy just likes to hurt himself and used a body that he hurt himself with to hurt you. That's just that was so, kind of his gimmick in the old 3D that's, games. That's too. so cool. Yeah, yeah, and he's his, great. His moves, his moves are a bit more comical looking, but yeah, you yeah. like crack his own back and like shoot a projectile. But like this is going full ham with with the idea. And they go they go full bone lord with this dude because of his like voice. He's like I'm an agent of chaos. Like and before yeah, yeah, he yeah. had like a different voice. He's like oh I'm an agent of chaos. Like he was more of like you know yeah. stoic in the older games, and now he's like just straight up a fucking Skeletor, and I'm gonna rip the shit out of you. <laughs> Pretty much. And because he mentions, uh, I think the website mentions he's from the, the realm of order, Sado, and he's like an anarchist that wants to fight against them. In the 3D games, it was there's a chaos realm and there's an or order realm and they're mm. both fighting against each other. But now he's like a freedom fighter working against them. So I'd like to think either in the story mode as a future DLC character, they'll have one of the order guys, which is uh, Hotaru. Hotaru. Who is the most he has two special moves that's all he ever had and that's all he will ever have in that game like he he had the most nothing i think otaro and, for anybody that doesn't know was just like a dynasty warriors looking dude he okay. was yeah yeah he just had white like he looks like fujin or whatever he just had like samurai armor on and like he was another character I would love to see brought back and like given more stuff. Yeah. Because Havoc is like a good first indication. And the same had. way it felt like Ashra, I don't know her actual backstory, but it felt like Ashra and Hotaro were like, oh, so these are the new 3D characters, but here's the girl version and here's the guy version. Yeah, yeah. something like that. So uh, we also got earlier today, actually, because uh, good God, the news just doesn't stop. We got the combat cast that showed off Smoke, uh, more of Ashra's gameplay, as well as Garrus. Did you guys get a chance to watch this? I did not get to watch it. No. Okay. I uh, heard Smoke gets a knife and Smoke everyone has a knife. else gets everything. Smoke has a knife and some interesting like tools. He gets like... I feel like they were holding back on Smoke's gameplay stuff because there's a, there's a moment where they show uh, a developer match. It's like pre-recorded, right? And Smoke gets a meterless cancel, which in Mortal Kombat is pretty crazy. Most of the time it's that's going to cost like, yeah, an MKX that costs like stamina gauge and it's pretty expensive. In this one, you literally see him meterless cancel a combo on the ground and continue the combo. I was like, Whoa, and they didn't go over that during the combat cast. So there was some things that's like, okay, I feel like they're holding back on some of his gameplay because he's obviously like an anti-zoner and he teleports behind you. And I'm like, oh, that shit's going to be unsafe. So it's like, you know, okay, how is he? How is his pressure going to be? And he, he, he's kind of like a 50-50 god, has full invisibility. So there's some there's some cool stuff here, but I feel like we got to get our hands on this character because I don't think they want to scare people. Yeah, for sure. It seems like it. I think it also seems like the ninjas, they might be not like kind of not s simplifying them, but they're not giving them as much stuff to wrap your head around because they know they're going to be popular. Like, Maybe. you know, like keep the character relatively simple. Like we haven't Maybe. seen like even Scorpion when they showed him on the combat cast. It was like, he Scorpion felt a little dry. Things. Yeah. Yeah. Which I think is interesting. Like that's a safe way to go about it. But at the same time, it's like give one of them something. Cause I'm yeah. sure it doesn't even really have anything that's super special. That's Unlike true. Ashra, and Garrus, who so, have all of these gimmicks and shit. Yeah, Ashra has, like, a full, like, you know, light form and then, like, a demon stance that buffs out and does all this crazy shit. Literally has, like, if you do the demon thing three times, it does this thing, like, type of thing. And then, and that's kind of interesting. And then they go absolutely ham on Garrus, who also has chores, who has this, like, time-building mechanic where you put out these clocks and they explode and moves lead into clock and that also counts towards it i'm like jesus dude so this is holy order garris or some shit here uh <laughs> like uh he he of all the characters like i i would love to say that man i can't wait to play smoke that character looks badass garris was like holy shit at what this guy is doing and he's actually like a command grab character he he does have a pretty decent command grab too so mm. i was genuinely impressed by how they changed garris yeah okay. just his costume looks sick too yeah, I feel like every character that they're showcasing now, like besides the beginning characters, they have just so much more crazy stuff, right? They're giving them 
like new mechanics, like even like personal mechanics, like right, Johnny Cage has a hype meter. Yep. Right. So like literally everyone has like those unique stuff and yeah, I think it's gonna be pretty exciting and like the game comes out what in a in a month and you what open beta comes out pretty soon too? Yeah, open beta is in like literally a week, dude. Uh even yeah. less than when the time this comes out and uh the game after the open beta is like one month away almost exactly. So it, it we're just in a weird situation where it's like dude even if we got a combat cast a week going over these characters i don't know if that would be enough time to actually demonstrate and go over the whole roster because we are still getting new roster additions like the roster isn't finished yet yeah so well, if they do three characters each one and they don't go over the characters from the beta because people have already played like you know they'll go over sub-zero that's kind of pointless now yeah yeah but i I because they're having like a twenty-five character roster. I assume that's the number. I, I don't even know if we have the final number. Do, I don't even know if that's actually been, even been revealed. Yeah, no, I don't think so either. Fully. Yeah, so it's like still up in the air, and we're like a month. Pre-order the game. You don't know how many characters you're getting, but pre-order the game. Like it's right. it's crazy. It's just too. This is just too close. Like to cram all this information and and the fact that the game. Don't even know. Sorry, Max. Go ahead. I'm just saying, just the fact that the game is still changing. Yeah, and we don't even know who the, like the main an antagonist even is yet. So Shang Tsung in some way, I guess. Some way. Um, did you did you check out any um like in depth uh, uh Lee May gameplay at all? Yeah, no, for sure. I, and I think she actually looks to be kind of one of the more fun characters. She's definitely the character I am prioritizing when the beta really? comes out. Yeah, that much, huh? I think I like her more than Johnny Cage, just like in terms of visuals and what she's doing and her strings and stuff. I'm like, yeah, she looks like a bit quicker and it uh, looks like, to me, like a more fun version of Sub-Zero because uh, Sub-Zero's ice stuff is nice, but I think Lee May's like gimmicks just look really fun. Uh, but Johnny's obviously got hype meter and we'll see how that goes. Yeah, because that's the character I played as uh, at the uh, booth at Evo, uh, Lee May. And at first I was like, okay, she seems fine. I don't understand this lantern thing. Yeah. Uh, the lantern's just kind of floating there. And then I uppercutted someone into it. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. That makes sense. But then I didn't even realize, and I should have, I checked the move list much, much later, that you can just detonate it with her air fireball. I'm like, oh, okay. And it's a massive explosion. Yeah. Nice. And that's when the character really started opening up. And I was like, she's cool. Justin, you played a bit of Johnny as well, right? Yeah, I like Johnny. His hype, like the hype meter, is really what makes it really fun because you could just special cancel over and over. Um, but it's actually pretty hard to build. Like mm. every time you land a special move, it builds a little bit, little bit. But you have to land his counter, where where then it builds up like twenty percent every yeah. single time. You're not getting so, hype meter like once a round. It's, no, it takes you, a while. Yeah, you need to land five of those like counters to to fill up one whole bar. If Jesus. You use if you use regular moves, it only builds like literally like maybe four percent. So even if you land like like Johnny Green Kick or whatever the hell it is, not Green Kick now, he does the yeah. pose after. It's just like a tiny bit. Yeah, it's a little tiny bit. Like like the counter is is what really builds it up like at least twenty percent. And the, but the counter is good though because if you land the counter, he does the little sway afterwards, and then you can punish people depending on the normal that they pressed. So yeah, um, so, physical counters are pretty decent in a lot of Mortal Kombat games in general, but not like OP. Not, not never yeah. usually like OP, but if that's like the one way you have to do it, then you just know what you got to wait for on Johnny. Just wait for him to hit the pose and then punish him. Yeah, pretty much. But like if you, with a game that's really like, you know, like in high level, I guess, compared, like they're going to think about frame data. When am I going to mash that down jab? You can really call that down jab out now right if you see it if you think somebody do a down jab do the counter yep. and then you build 20 percent. you go behind them and now it's your turn back again so johnny's gonna be is like one of those characters that's like like oh yeah you think i'm minus nah i'm not minus you may yeah. you have <laughs> you you have to guess if i'm if i'm gonna press a button or not or do the counter or not gotcha so he, he he's gonna be pretty he's gonna maul you like pretty much that's like that's gonna be what johnny cage does i think he's gonna maul you his combos are really easy as well too like literally like the way the strings are it's like it's like square triangle square square triangle o square triangle x and then the same mm. thing for triangle square o triangle square triangle same thing for o gotcha over and over so it's his strings are really easy to remember actually yeah and that's kind of the that's, that kind of echoes throughout most of mortal kombat one is that like openers are you pretty much do one or two 
Yeah. And that's about it, which is which is kind of very similar to Mortal Kombat uh, 11, where there's not a ton of openers for character. You see a lot of like the same like application of lunging forward opener compared to like, uh, I think that I think it's sort of, sort of like that in MK9 as well. MKX just almost had too many strings that were actually not good, but a lot of different options where it's like, OK, here's this exhaustive list of a shit ton of strings per character. This one feels like we're they're They're trying to refine them. They want to make every string good and not bloat the character move list that much. Yeah, there's that. And then also Frost, Frost Cameo. She you were allowed to play her. Uh she, oh, yeah. she, she's a combo extender. You could do like string string into like a freeze low. Like she literally has sub zero's low low freeze. And then you get a free combo afterwards. She has this little ace orb ball that just floats around like a bubble. Like Birdie's bubblegum V skill. And then you can like literally just follow around it and then grab them into the ball. They get frozen as well too. So She's a she's a good combo character with a good like kind of like utility of that using that ice ball bubble. Sure. Yeah, and this nice. uh, and we saw just on the combat cast earlier today like we finally saw Sub Zero uh Sub Zero assist or cameo and yeah. he literally like touches your back and gives you a body of ice armor. Oh, that's that sick. nullifies projectiles. So it's like like Glacius? for a while, not like one hit. No, no. Well, Glacius does like physical and projectile. This is like all oh, yeah. projectiles. So you can oh. just run forward and it doesn't like it didn't seem to be one oh. hit. It seemed to be for like a period of time. So like it was that like Jade move. Yeah, it, it sort of, exactly. Yeah, it pretty much like Jade's move. Yeah. So hmm. I was like that seems good. <laughs> that seems <laughs> there's a lot of like anti-zoning stuff in the game uh in in cameo form it looks like. Yeah, that's so actually like, really sick. Sub Zero has that, and then Scorpion has the like reverse get over here. Like, yeah. come with me. Come, like, <laughs> please come over here, <laughs> please. But yeah, so I, they, I the, the, with the, all the stuff we saw in the combat cast today uh, didn't go over all of the mechanical differences at the show, and everyone was saying that Mortal Kombat One feels way faster because they added dash blocking. But how did how did it feel to you, Justin? I felt like it. You know, dash blocking is definitely better. It's improved a lot. But in terms of regular dashing and regular movement, it's still the same from what we, what we played. But dash blocking is definitely how you would want to move right now if you're playing competitively or you're playing online. So, like, the better option is to just look the walk speed, which is what it was before. Yeah, dash blocking is probably going to be better than, than the walk, than just walking in general. Gotcha. Yeah, I didn't notice it at first. I was just testing the regular dash and didn't realize that that was a change. I did notice that that other new thing um, that you everyone has a universal launcher off their uppercut that you jump cancel with, and it uses meter now. Two bars. Two bars? I thought it was one. It takes yeah. two bars to start your aerial rave. It's really expensive. It's all, I hope it's called like aerial crave with like, with like a crave. K, yeah yeah no that'd be sick and there's another one a uh, last breath from mk11 was added in yeah that like takes your bar uh, that takes your bar when you're at like low to chip damage health instead of yeah. just killing you it takes away your meter but it's like you need you need your full meter so you can survive like three hits it's yes the, 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 <laughs> i didn't even know i didn't know that was in mk11 because i guess i stopped playing it before I yeah I, 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 I never noticed it but i was in training mode so not training mode but pretty uh. much playing by myself so i didn't even notice like that was a thing hmm. yeah and i think the the aerial rave thing is like cool it's neat that you can follow up a down to if you if you really want but it sounds like kind of like a KO situation. Like in a game where that meter is tied to your breaker, you're not going to just drop it on two bar, launch you casually and fuck you up. Uh, you probably want to save that for breakers. That's the most valuable thing that meter can be used on. But yeah. if you if you get like the final hit in a round, right? And you know that you can kill them and they can't break it, then yeah, that's probably the, a really good use of that meter. But it's weird in a game where Sonya assist allows yeah. you to just to do that anyway. Yeah, you could do down two Sonya assist, right? So... Yeah. You could still do that with your assist. So you don't really need that, like the down two into launcher by yourself because you have assist to help you. Um, and you're, I guess, when you're playing the game, you're supposed to think about like I guess assist management. You should you should always have an assist on standby. Sure. Type of thing. So we'll see. And and MK1 was already a game where they tried to nerf jump kicks. So a yeah. lot of stand ones were consistently like anti airing, which took a really specific timing in the older games, and jump kicks were losing a lot to down twos 
So I think that's what they're looking at. They're like, okay, so yeah, if you're if down twos are more consistent and good, let's add something to it to make it even more spicy outside of the cameo. I see where they're going with it, but it doesn't come across. This is going to change the whole game. Like, probably mm. not. It'll be a really specific scenario thing. I don't remember if about I don't remember if we if, if it was in the last build, but do you remember like when you did a combo, you you heard like the the noise of the crowd. Oh, like in like uh. the sound effects in the background, right? Yeah, like when you do uppercut and MK1, and then it'll be like, oh, like the crowd's like cheering for you in the background. Huh. You, like, so you when mean, I did. You mean Mortal Kombat 1? Yeah, one from I, I, yeah, yeah, the, the 1992. You know what I'm talking oh. about when you do. The, yeah, uh, I okay. think that was only on certain stages, though, when there was a, the crowd of monks around. I don't, yeah. I'm not sure if it happened on every stage. So, so when I was doing my Johnny Cage combo, like, and I'm like rewatching the footage, and I did a combo, like a, like a nine hit combo. Like the crowd would be like, oh, like like what I did down too, really? and I'm like, I'm like, did they add it that, or has that always been there? <sighs> is that related Maybe it's to just for Johnny? Yeah, I was about to say, is that like a Maybe. Johnny hype meter thing? No, it was no hype meter. The people huh. were just like, it literally sounded like the Mortal Kombat one 1992 sound effect. Interesting. I have I have to check that. It's just send me your footage. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't get I didn't do a nine hit combo with Johnny. It, it, it was really cool. I was like, oh sh wait, what really? So yeah. that's neat. So yeah, I think that was that was Evo. Uh, there's even more announcements that are technically in here. Other things like uh, the KOF uh, beta, uh, the KOF 13 beta. The game's going to be like officially coming out soon. Samurai Showdown rollback is coming out relatively soon. Grand Blue Fantasy versus Rising got free to play for like four oh, yeah. characters, which is huge. That's pretty great. Uh, and also like the rollback implementation that's coming out in November. So there's you know just an absolute billion of announcements for it's, fighting it's games christmas christmas for fighting games it's, it's, in it's, August. it's, it's it, more than christmas this is something else <laughs> this is this is pretty much the the dawn of a new era right i think so uh max also one final thing uh next year at evo you're probably going to be streaming again which is really cool i really advise you for the thursday before evo you come down to vegas you ha you you kindly hang around Justin and he'll bring you to Momofuku that is run by Dogface. I saw I was and, wondering if that and, was the case. Yeah. And you will have the greatest meal of your fucking life. <laughs> it's, it, 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 it was a feast. Dude, I was crying. Justin, super, super accommodating and welcoming. I couldn't believe. I felt like the first time in my life, I felt like a little bit like a baller. So <laughs> a big a big thanks to Mr. Wong for that. I, me and my wife had an incredible time. So after you eat, uh, Max, you can go back home. But you come for that meal. I think this is really unfair because I am super hungry right now. <laughs> <laughs> and plus, it's you haven't you probably haven't seen Dogface in like forever. I I dude, I was like, is that dog? Oh my god! And because like last time I'd seen him was when he was making like content in the early like 2010s, you know, or before that. So, yeah, man, Evo's just that wonderful sort of thing where you can all just stars align and meet at Vegas at that one time. <laughs> Hopefully, not come home with COVID. <laughs> Hopefully. I, we can't control that one. <laughs> <laughs>